Now, at this time, at Pratt Institute, I met two very important people, again, and you're going to see how these different people have an influence on my work. I met a guy named Cornell Jones and a guy named Brad Downey. Brad Downey and Cornell Jones were filmmakers at Pratt Institute, and they, wanted, they needed a film to graduate with. They needed a thesis film you know, to show at the end of their course, and they wanted to, to focus in on graffiti art. And so that's what they did. They approached me and asked if I wanted to be a part of this film, and I said, yes, of course. Now, this is how things change, uh, how, how relationships change. Myself and Brad Downey became very close friends, you know? And naturally, when people get closer, they begin to emulate each other in a way. So Brad Downey, at some point, uh, he ceased to be becoming a filmmaker in, a, in, the, in the traditional sense and went from behind the camera into the front of the camera, meaning he was not only filming what I was doing, but he also began to be, participate in graffiti and street art itself. So he, we became close friends and we began to collaborate in a way. And this was our first, one of our first collaborations, Verbs and Downey. Now this sign is so ugly that I only want to show you the back of it. This is how, this is how collaborations can be rusty at, at the beginning. Have you ever worked with somebody and it doesn't, like, it, it doesn't work immediately? It takes some time to develop? This is what happened with myself and Brad Downey. So, this is just to show you how we signed our works as a collaborative force. Downey also began to make works similar to my own, you see? As you can see, you can see the similarity, right? <laughs> right? So you take the simplicity of this verb sign, and you can see how Brad Downey emulated it in his own <laughs> sign, you see? And he, he changed the R, so it's a play on his own uh, name, essentially. Or you take the simplicity of this verb sign, and you see it in the simplicity of the, of the Downey sign, okay? So this is our collaboration. I didn't know it then, but this would be my second great collaboration on the street. Remember I told you Andre Highland, the guy, the fellow that I was working with the vest in Cincinnati? He was my first kind of partner in a way. So I've had many different relationships with artists, all right? Now at this time, in another development in my personal work, I had fallen in love for the first time. When I got to New York, I met a woman, fell in love, and that completely changed the way I looked at art. Why? Because verbs now began to be irrelevant, right? You guys have been in a, if you've ever fallen in love, it changes the way you look at things, okay? So I, f I asked myself, why am I writing the same thing over and over again in as many different places as possible when I have these feelings for, for someone else, you see? It began to be, verbs began to be irrelevant. It didn't make any sense for me to write verbs over and over and over and over and over again, right? When I had all these feelings. So what can I do with these feelings? What happens? Your drawings begin to change as an artist, right? Once your drawings begin to change, then your, your paintings begin to change. And I didn't know it then, but this was my first venture into what's called street art, you see. This is now, I'm not a straight, a straight graffiti writer. I didn't call myself a street artist then, but you could categorize it as that now. When, when I was doing this, this is an example, it was just as illegal as if I were writing verbs. But what, what happened? The content changed, right? Verbs would have never written love you there. And why did I do that? Because I fell in love. It changed the way I saw the world, okay? So I figured, wait a minute, that's pretty expressive. You know, why don't I keep being expressive in a way? Why don't I keep communicating to the, to the environment, to, to, to the community abroad, right? So why don't I do something positive that people can understand and maybe uplift them? But I was still as illegal. I was running from the police just as much, you know, as I would have as verbs, you see. So my message changed. Now, this is, I also added a bit of humor into my work as well. And very site specific. You see this here? Very, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of immature in a way. But not immature if you put it next to a river that smells bad. And this is where this work was put here. This is, the Ohio River is right here that divides Cincinnati and Covington. It smells terrible there, right? So why don't I express the sentiment, the feeling, the feeling you get while you're there, right? This is the, kind of my message now. I was now a graffiti writer doing something completely illegal but a different message. And that, what that did was it, uh, it made me change what I go under. And, and this is a, 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 a gift uh, put in Soho. You know, it makes sense. Why? Because Soho is a shopping district. People buy stuff there all the time, gifts and everything, all right? So you can see now at this point 
my philosophy has changed completely than I, than I was when I was a kid, right? As verbs, as a teenager. I'm growing, a I'm maturing a little bit, right? I'm 20 years old, I see the world differently, and I'm in love. And now I have a new name to go by, okay? I've dropped verbs. Verbs no, no longer exists. Now I need a name to, to sign my works under, a new name. And that new name was Darius Jones. It's the most basic name you can think of, okay? So now I'm writing graffiti, but it doesn't look like graffiti, and it's saying things different every time, okay? I'm still going out with the vest, the hard hat, but things have changed. And like I said, with my collaboration with Downey, we are now known as Darius and Downey after this change. And this is, like I said, this is the second great collaboration we had on the street. Now, as Darius and Downey, we could drop our egos respectively and work together on a large scale. You see this? Verbs would never would have done this. So this work says, clone Jesus, right? So we have been waiting for Christ for how long? 2,000 years, right? Maybe we should use the modern technology and clone him somehow. <laughs> Take a sample of the blood that's on the shroud of Torin and, and clone him. They did it to the sheep. Why not do it to the shepherd in a way? Now, clone Jesus, clone Jesus uh, was, was something that was funny to us, but our graffiti writing friends, the people would have done something like this, they didn't understand it. I had a guy that came up to me and said, hey, that clone Jesus is cool, but who's clone and who's Jesus? <laughs> so he didn't get it, all right? But a, a, a Christian, a, you know, a good, you know, good following Christian who reads the good book might have gotten it, all right? So now we're communicating outside of our, you know, our community of graffiti writers, you see here. And also communicating to, very site specifically to the people who are around us. This says, honk if you love graffiti. Where is that? That's right next to a highway called the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, where thousands and thousands of people pass every day. And to show you the effectiveness of this, myself and Brad went up to the hill one day and we heard people honking, actually, as they were there. A little participation, you see. Uh, we also began to be sensitive to different types of languages wherever we went. Myself and Brad Downing went to Berlin, Germany in 2003. So we thought, you know, yes, most people understand English, but why should we subject everyone to English when everyone, this is the, the mother tongue is German? So we tried to spell this concept out. We misspelled it, by the way. We wanted to say Originalgroza. It says Originalgroza, but so what? Most of the people understood it, and I'm sure people could appreciate the fact that these Americans came over here and defaced their property with their own language. Now, this is us, myself and Brad Down. This is just to show you how we're changing our graffiti and our street art. It changes where we go. Site-specific qualities, you see. This is another piece in Berlin. It's in Kreuzberg, Aber uh, Eisenstock Kunst, which is actually still there um, because it fits in with the community. Why does it fit in with the community? Because every May 1st, these people go out and throw Molotov cocktails in this neighborhood for some reason. I don't know. We don't know why. But we heard that was what happened, so we thought we would say, make a statement about that. And it stayed there. It, it, people have tolerated it and let it exist there, probably because it speaks to them in some way. So these are lessons we are learning as we go along, you see. As you, can you see a little bit of my development from the graffiti writer to this now? Uh, I also began to play with fire at the age of uh, 2021. 20, Not only had I fallen in love and seen the world differently, but I also began to use different materials, okay? I learned the trade of steel working. There's a guy named Revs from Brooklyn. He's a very famous graffiti writer in New York City. He, he works in steel. I figured I should work in steel as well. So here I am playing with an oxy, oxyacetylene torch and also arc welding here. So guess what that did? That took my graffiti from what? two dimensions on the wall, the brick wall, the train, and put it into three dimensions now. You can walk around the street art that I'm doing now. So uh, you, know, you can see this flower here, and you, know, you can actually obviously go up and touch it and, and feel it and walk around and, and experience it in a different way than if I were just to paint this on a wall, right? <laughs> 